Eaton. Um, those resources are there, and if anybody has any questions, they can talk to Dr. Everett and myself. So with that said, um, disclaimer. Yes, thank you. Uh, Reese Everett, Manitou Borough School District. Content warning for our any radio listeners that are out there, as well as our audience here. This is a meeting of the Matanuska Susitna Borough School District Library Advisory Committee. The committee's primary purpose is, is to review the suitability of book titles which appear or may appear in our district's school libraries. The committee discusses the content of, the book, of these books during our monthly meetings, and these meetings are broadcast live by Big Cabbage Radio. The substance of these discussions may be alarming to some listeners. Okay, the next slide, just a quick update. Board 8 update, the, the books, our last set of books that you guys recommended, evaluate, and read, um, were all, you can see the votes, Red Hood, 8 to 1 vote, 2 pending, Court of Wings, again, one of our favorite authors, Sarah Moss, 6 to vote, 6 to 4, <laughs> one, 1 pending, Court of Frost, The Starlight, Sarah Moss, 7 to 3, 1 pending, and I believe there are two more Sarah Moss books of the six left. Uh, the next board meeting is May 22nd, so you guys, they'll take your guys' recommendations today, and then those will be moved forward to the May 22nd vote. Right, that moves us to our guidelines. I feel like we're in a good spot here. It's not necessary to review these. The next one, Laura. And then our recommendations for May. And so with that said, we'll just quickly transition into our books. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. Dr. Just, Ainsworth, oh, yes. a point of information. If, if I can ask uh, Laura Richardson to uh, identify members that are not with us that have communicated their votes versus members who have not communicated their votes, just for the record. Thank you. Sure thing. Yes, for the record, Laura Richardson. And tonight I have emailed or hand delivered votes from Amanda Cottle, Nicole Smith, and Melinda Dale. All three were not able to be here in person, but took the time to send these, this information in. We also have um, Katie Clark, who will be here shortly, but she's not presently in the room. I have not heard from Andrew Shane, so we'll see. And Katie's is a soccer game. Is that where um, she's at? Her son's track meet. He okay. has a, you know, elementary track meet. You have your one event, and it's a very good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> elementary track meet event scheduled at five. Which, if any of us have ever attended an elementary track meet, <laughs> as fun as they are, <laughs> always so fun. The schedule sometimes gets thrown <laughs> off a bit. It's a little subjective. <laughs> yeah, you know, like them all. But it's only fifth grade today. And we awesome. divided it into the two days to try and at least, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Control the chaos a little bit. Okay, what book do you guys want to talk about? Uh, what's first on? Should we start with Tilt? This is the first one. Tilt, Mrs. Hopkins. Okay, so the, the floor is yours. I'll start. Okay, Nathan. Nathan Buck speaking. Um, so I don't know how many Ellen Health Hopkins books we've read so far, but uh, the more we read, the more I'm convinced that uh, I think I know one of the sources of all the mental health crisis in the world. Um, these books are absolutely depressing. In regards to how it fits the statute or how it's weighed against the statute, it does have a fair amount of sex in it, including some details. There's one particular scene, I'm, I don't remember what page it's on, but uh, there's one particular scene where like, the dude doesn't have a condom, so it describes the act, and then he pulls out and it talks about how it he sleeks her stomach or something like that. Um, it's pretty graphic um, in a multiple points. I do think it violates the statute, um, and it's just all around a horrible book. Yes, Amber? Amber in um, I find that I, I feel like, I appreciate the conversation because when I read these, uh, depending on the order in which I read these books, 
sometimes one can seem like a palate cleanser compared to another. Um, and I read this one directly after reading Court of Silver Flame. Um, and I actually felt like it was actually, a, it, that it did not actually um, violate the state statute. Um, and so I do appreciate the conversation. I'm like, oh, let me, let me re be reminded of some of those things that perhaps in contact, in, in the comparatively, yes. seem really benign. Um, so thank you for adding, adding value to the conversation to kind of uh, bring back the, the statute and keep that the focus of uh, the reading. Um, well, yeah, horribly depressing. I did find that there were, you know, this author goes for like teenage hot topics. And um, while depressing, some of those I think are actually really relevant to kids. And um, I, I, don't, I don't think this one was nearly as bad as her other ones. So, or at least the last one that we read of hers. Um, so I'm a little bit on the fence still as to where I'll vote. I think we have one more uh, Ella Hopkins book, mm -hmm. and I, I know that I don't have a vote on the selection, but I'm a highly recommend of the six books that we have left that you guys select that as one of the six. So I think that book is going to cause a little bit of controversial controversy because we might not get through the six books unless you guys really want to power down <laughs> the last couple weeks here. Yes, Melody. Um. I actually compared this one to the one we read before, which was identical, is that right? So I was comparing it to identical, so I kind of had the same reaction to it, like, oh, God, it's not quite as bad as the one that we <laughs> read with identical. But I do agree with Amber that this definitely follows um, the teenage mindset of, you know, no frontal lobe. It's very clear that their, you know, their decision-making is so ability and idea of cause and effect and everything like that is so so limited and I really feel like that is something she does that's very authentic as far as uh, portraying the adolescent mind and the way that uh, adolescents make decisions. Um, there is sex in it um, because we all know all the different ways that sex can destroy lives and I think that's really one way that she does look at that. She looks at that ability of decisions you make at this point in your life, whether it's drugs or sex or any any of the other um, potentially harmful choices that people make with their bodies, she really does explore that in her books. And um, whether it's you know causes discomfort or not, remember that we are not the audience. Um, you know this is geared towards adolescents, and it clearly shows cause and effect. This book does. So even though I would say yes, um, it does depict um, uh, sex in various forms, it definitely has literary literary value as far as the target audience goes because you can see in the in the lives of the protagonists, the various protagonists, the clear consequences. Thank you. Yes. So Laura Richardson, on behalf of Melinda Dale, in her comments, she wrote that Tilt explores many facets of teen reality, sex, masturbation, teen pregnancy, abortion, marijuana use, HIV, date rape, suicide attempt, wrestling with faith, and death of a sibling. Um, she did make note of the author's note in the book that says, sex is an important part of life, but please consider delaying it until you are in a committed relationship. And please remember that an unplanned pregnancy or sexually transmitted disease will change your life forever. Be smart. So those were things that stood out for Melinda Dale in terms of her review of this book. Thank you. Any other commentary? Yes, Kim. So um, for me, the sexual assault type of situation, the explicit sex acts, the suicide, the drugs, the alcohol, all of that in it to me, it just, um, and just some of the descriptions of some of the sexual aspects of the book does appear to, for me, to um, meet the period of interest. Kara? Kara Byerly. Um, yeah, so this book has like a bunch of different characters and it's definitely written in the adolescent perspective. Um, so you can kind of see that and I, for me it was kind of hard to track sometimes like how the characters were related because I know that they were trying to wind it all together. 
Um, but I mean, it talks about sex and rape and HIV um, and like sexual abuse um, and teen pregnancy and suicide and drugs uh, and alcohol and divorced parents. So I feel like it does touch on a lot of topics. Um, so when I was going through the questions, you know, question one, I circled yes for the statute. Um, for question two, you know, I think some of those scenes might appeal to the prurient interest as a whole. Does it appear, appeal to the prurient interest? You know, it, I think it could be argued no or yes, but um, if I were to circle yes and go on to question three, again, looking at it as a whole, does it have literary, artistic, educational, political, or scientific value? You know, I definitely think there's something about, I wish there was like a, like a social connection type of value, but that's not what's listed in here, and I don't know if that would fall under like educational or scientific um, or literary. Uh, so then I would maybe go to question four, and I, you know, I don't know if I would answer yes to this question. Um, I, you know, I don't think that it's, the whole book is patently offensive. I definitely think it's trying to share the stories of the, the children in these, these books, and they're going through hard things, and I think it's hard to, you know, discuss those hard things, but it's very honest. John, John Deal, uh, I find myself very much aligning with Amber, her description. Um, uh, I did not read Tilt before I read, I did not read Identical before I read Tilt. I read Identical after reading Tilt. Um, I'm going to say, try to be real succinct. Number one, the, the, the first thing that struck me was they, they danced the line with the statue right up on the edge of the statue. So I'm not too sure how to assess that. But the thing that keeps jumping in my mind is something called neuroplasticity. And when, when you get that detailed, the question is what damage is it going to do to a young mind? You cannot deny neuroplasticity. You can't run away from it. We all know this exists. So you err on the side of caution to protect people until they're ready. And I think that's the thing, that, that's what a person who cares should really think about. It's not that the topics aren't good topics, it's the manner in which they're addressed. Okay, not seeing any more comments. I think we're ready for a vote. Laura? So the first vote is, does this book meet the statute for indecency? This, this is a yes or no vote. Nathaniel Buck? Yes, it does. Kara Byerly? No. Amanda Cottle, um, and I have her information right here. Yes. She says yes. Katie Clark will be here shortly. Melinda Dale? Oh boy. Sorry, this could be cumbersome tonight, folks. <laughs> Um, Melinda Dale says, no, it does not violate statute. John Deal? Shane is not present. Nicole Smith? No. Oops. Kim Swanson? Yes. And Melody Ray? No. Okay, and the next vote is um, the recommendations. And you're choosing between one through four. One, retain at all school libraries. Two, retain only at high school libraries. Three, retain only at middle and high school libraries, or four, remove from all libraries. Nathaniel Buck? Uh, remove from all four. Kara Byerly? Four. Amanda Cottle recommends four, remove from all. Katie Clark? Uh, Melinda Dale recommends two, retain at high school only. John Deal? Four. Amber Ranella? Sure. Andrew Shane is not present. Nicole Smith? 
statute six no does not violate stats state statute and two votes are pending in terms of recommendations five votes for removed from all libraries um, four votes for re or retain and high school vote libraries only and two pending and the, the two pending are Katie and Andrew? That's correct. Okay. All right, thank you, Laura. Yes. Um. All right, so we have uh, I Never, You, in a Court of Silver Flames. Kim? I Never. I Never? Okay. That's what I next, yeah. Okay, let's just go in order. Yes, Amber. Uh, Amber Nilla. This one is uh, billed as being similar to I can't remember, whatever it was that we, we read forever. earlier. Forever, forever, yeah. Uh, and I found this one to be much healthier. Um, I appreciated the depiction of relationship in this story. Um, there is sex in this story, but it's not explicit. Um, although those two guys say otherwise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any explicit sex in this as I was reading through it, and I appreciated that about this. I, I thought it, it actually kind of took a healthy approach to modeling uh, relationship, budding relationships and, and identity. <laughs> Give it a go, John. I just got to pick which one. Uh, John? John Deal. Um, there is explicit sex. I mean, it's ex exquisitely explicit. Uh, and I, I only mark the most egregious. I try to be a little bit more tolerant than others. But <laughs> uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. But, um, yeah, I found it. Yeah, this is more than, more than violates the statute. Upset. You know, another one of the things we talk about is educators' is close reading strategies. And this is illustration of close reading, note taking, right? <laughs> and I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'll start at page 240. That's, that's where I was at. <laughs> Setting, they start in the shower. I keep stroking him while I feel myself get hotter and closer. I can feel him get harder while my hand moves up and down. Are you close? He whispers in my ear. How can you tell? I ask through labored breathing. Your knees are shaking. I'm almost there, I say. He takes that as a cue to kick it up a notch, working a little faster and harder. And within seconds, the feelings overtake me, and my moans drown out the sound of the raindrops beating on the Jeep, Jeep's roof. This isn't the shower sex scene. That's another scene. Um, after I recuperate, I can focus solely on him. I use both hands to cover every inch of him. We shift so that he sits back in his seat and I lean over kissing him while I tickle and stroke. Just as he knows how to make me burst, I know what he likes. I know where he likes me to be gentle and where he wants more pressure. Oh God, he mutters. His utterance of oh God is the equivalent of my shaking knees. It's the signal to me that he's closing in. I pull my face away from his to watch his expression. I love to watch the ecstasy take over. His eyes squeeze shut, his mouth opens wide. He stays like that for a beat while he throbs in my hand. He opens his eyes and sees that I'm watching him progress through the stages of his orgasm. It's really the only time the formidable Luke Hellstrom is vulnerable. Um, that's one of many explicit sex scenes in the book. Oh, I, yeah. Mm. Well, 
Why even bother? I didn't have enough sticky notes. <laughs> Goodness sakes. I didn't have enough sticky notes. <laughs> Other comments? Are we we're putting this one to vote? All right, Laura, we're putting it to vote. Great. First vote, does this violate statute for indecency, Nathaniel Buck? Yes. Here, Byerly. I have to abstain. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, Amanda Cottle voted yes. Katie Clark is not here. Melinda Dale voted no. John Deal? Yes. Amber Ranella? No. Andrew Shane is not here. Nicole Smith? Uh, Reese Everett speaking for Nicole Smith's communication and indicates that she is not quite finished and will send a recommendation as soon as she can. Thank you. Kim Swanson? Yes. Melody Wright? Yes. All right. And recommendations. One, retain at all school libraries. Two, retain only at high school libraries. Three, retain only at middle and high school libraries. Or four, remove from all school libraries. Nathaniel Buck? Four, remove from all. Okay. Kara, and start yes. this round. Yep. Amanda Cottle is two. Retain only at high school libraries. Katie Clark is not present. Melinda Dale was two. Retain only at high school libraries. John Deal? Four. Amber Ranella? Two. Andrew Shane is not present. Nicole Smith is not, doesn't have her vote in for that one yet either. Kim Swanson? Four. And Melody Wright? Four. All right, so total votes for this one. Five for yes. No is one with five pending votes. Two for no. Two for no. Oh. Melinda Dale, Amber Renault. Oh, you're right. Yes. Sorry, I had a little, little scribble mark there. Yep, two for no. Got it. Thanks. And so that means four um, pending votes. And in terms of recommendations, four removed from all school libraries is one, two, three, four. And in terms of retaining only at high school libraries is one, two, three. Three votes of retain only at high school. And pending four. Four votes are pending, I should say. Okay, we move to the book U. Uh, Kara? Byerly, I have to say, I was amazed at her ability to get in the head of a character and take us through that. This author did an excellent job at that um, for an adult. So when I was going through the questions, uh, I will say it is about like a stalker, um, and there's no happy endings. Uh, question one, I answered yes. Um, question two, I think this book does appeal to the purient interest in a very troublesome way. Um, question three, I don't think this book has value for children under 16 years of age. And I do think that this book would be patently offensive to the whole community, so I answered that as yes, so I do find it violates the statute, and I will vote to remove it. Um, like I said, though, this, this author did an incredible job. I was amazed at all the details and the way that she was able to, to take us through the mind of this very disturbing character. On behalf of Melinda Dale, uh, the comments that she wrote here Say that the lots that there's lots of profanity and sexual comments. This book is a disturbing story of a serial killer who selects and stalks his female and male victims. He is sexually obsessed and plans carefully, so he has taken over victims' lives by infiltrating email, etc. He is an adult, or this is an adult book not suitable for high school. Other comments, Kim? So I think it was page three or four that it starts right off and it talks about Aaron and So, um, anyway, I grew up in Rhode Island, around Brown University, spent a lot of time there. Um, she says that she made it out of Brown University alive and ended up in LA. So I was like, hmm. Anyhow, um, the book is, yeah, not suitable for kids in school. Um, really.
I'll just say did it all the above, but one correction, Miss Kim, it's uh, talking on page two, it talks about kitty porn, not just any type of porn. That's a whole other level. Which the mention of it isn't necessarily a violation of the statute, but you don't want to plant that. Okay, not seeing any more comments. Laura, I think we're ready for a vote. All right, I think this is where you go quickly. <laughs> yes. um, does this book violate the statute for decency, Nathaniel Buck? Yeah. Karen Byerly? Yes. Amanda Cottle, via proxy, yes. Katie Clark is not present. Melinda Dale, it's by proxy, yes. Um, John Deal? Yes. Ann Perinella? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Andrew Shane is not present. Nicole Smith? Uh, Nicole Smith votes yes. Kim Swanson? Yes. And Melody Wright? Yes. Okay, that is nine yes votes and two pending. And recommendations? One, retain at all school libraries. Two, retain only at high school libraries. Three, retain only at middle and high school libraries. Or four, remove from all. Uh, Nathaniel Buck? Four small. Kara Byerly? Four. Amanda Cowell by a proxy? Four. Katie Clark is not present. Melinda Dale by a proxy? Four. John Deal? Four. Amber Ranella? Four. Andrew Shane is not present. Nicole Smith? Four. Kim Swanson? Four. And Melody Wright? Four. All right, well, this is E. Nine votes for remove from all, two pending. Okay, we are moving at a pretty good rhythm tonight, so we finished with one of our favorite authors, A Court of Silver Flames, by Sarah J. Moss. Or is yours, Kim? I'll just vote now. Yes. Yeah. We could probably just vote now. We could probably just vote just, now. Well, I want to honor Do you. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I think it's the duty of our committee to speak to it if we can, okay? Agreed. Good so, academic work. <laughs> a Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. This is Kara Byerly. Um, does it, the the book depict? Um, well, what I've noticed about this, and I, that the climax of the book was exactly that, and that, that was like no pun, <laughs> no pun intended. Repeated <laughs> throughout. I feel like the first two hundred pages. That was it. It was just leading up to that one moment, and then the remaining 500 pages, or I think it was eight, 600, um, was just like going up and down that hill. Uh, so I feel like for question one, I answered yes, because it features pretty much all of that. Um, question two, I answered yes. Question three and four, I answered yes. So I do think this book violates the statute and that it should be removed from the school. Yes. I believe this is <laughs> no. this is written for adult. It's not a young adult book. I'm uh, pretty sure Katie's not here to confirm that, but I believe that is how it's marketed. Yeah, I think we're ready for a vote, Laura. Okay. Well, this is efficient tonight. <laughs> um, oh, I have one comment on the previous vote as soon as we're done with these votes. But um, Nathaniel Buck, does it violate the statute for indecency? Nathaniel Buck. Often five, burn it. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, got it. Here at Byerly. Yes. Amanda Cottle, um, via proxy. Yes. Um, Katie Clark is not present. Melinda Dale. Yes. John Deal. Yes. Amber Ranella. Yes. Andrew Shane is not present. Um, Nicole Smith? Nicole Smith votes yes. Kim Swanson? Yes. And Melody Wright? Yes. All right. And for the sake of expediency, I think I know how this one's going to go. <laughs> so, your committee recommendations, the two that are most likely to be used would be um, number two, retain only at high school libraries, or number four, remove from all school libraries, so for efficiency's sake, we'll roll with that. Um, Nathaniel Buck? Four. And Kara Byerly? Four. Amanda Cottle says remove from all. Four. Katie Clark is not present. Melinda Dale? Four. Remove from all. John Deal? Four. Amber Ranella? Four. Andrew Shane is not present. Nicole Smith? Four. 
Kim Swanson? Four. And Melody Ray? Four. So we have nine votes for violating statute, and we have nine votes to remove, and we have two pending votes. And if we could take one step backwards, Dr. Ainsworth. Yep. Um, in the previous votes, you, I was incorrect um, with with Amanda Cottle's vote by proxy here. I was noticing I marked the wrong one. Um, she actually is finishing that book, so there's actually three pending for the book, three votes pending. Three pending. So okay. I apologize for that misrepresentation. Well, I've made a correction in the notes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, okay, yeah. Um, if you'll go through, go to the, the, the slide with the books left. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So these are the six books we have. I think my recommendation is you guys select tricks for the reasons stated previously. It's, I think, somewhat controversial. Then we have the two Sarah Moss books. Maybe it would be nice to put a bow tie on that and finish that's all a different them. series, though, yeah, isn't it's, it's, it? It is a different Sarah series. Moss yep. Series. So that's books three and four. I think. Yeah. Oh. Same Some, last name, though. Something yeah, to keep in mind. It's a different series. You guys already read Hand, Handmaid's Tale. This is the graphic version, so you could get through it pretty quickly. It's it's not text heavy yeah. at all. So. Um, your rhythm has been four. I'll leave that up to you guys. I, I don't think it's reasonable that you're going to get through six. If we have to leave two, if we only have one meeting left, um, we can go to the board and say we could get through all the books, and then we'll take direction from the board on how they want us to. And it might be they just remand them to administration. Um, but I need to leave that decision up to them. So, yeah, Melody? Um, I have professional development next month, and they just mailed me five books I have to read through the week after this meeting. So I'll just tell you right now, I've got these other five books about the Japanese um, incarceration during World War II that I have to get through yeah. before this week of PD. So I, I know I can't do five. I'm sorry, I can't do I mean, we can take that many, but I'll have to just abstain. Yeah. I just don't. We should just take all six. Yeah. We, we should just <laughs> yeah. take all six. <laughs> no, I'm saying, yeah. if you do, I will not be reading oh. all six. <laughs> Jamie, you had a comment or Amber? Amber? Yeah, I had a clarifying question. I like to maybe prioritize those that are actually in circulation in our libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a clear idea of which those are? I, like, for example, I, I'm, I'm not aware of the Sarah Moss books being in circulation. Well, that, well so none of them are currently in circulation. That, yeah. That are actually cataloged in our libraries. Yes, so Laura. For reference here, I'll kind of set them sideways. The number of copies that we received from library, libraries, the Living Dead Girl was three. Um, also, three of the Empire of Storms. There were only three of those in circulation. Yeah, there were three of these that we received from schools. Perfect had three copies. <laughs> this is not going to make it easier, I don't think, Amber. <laughs> um, oh, Trix had a total of six copies that we received from schools. Um, Kingdom of Ash had four that we received from schools. And I know that Handmaid's Tale had one copy that we yeah, received. There was very, so. yeah. Yeah. But my thinking was if they should be returned to school, if they should be in circulation, they should be back in libraries. So that was what my thinking was, but I guess it doesn't make much of a difference there. It's about the same. Okay. Yeah. Any other thoughts on how you guys prioritize? Thank you, Melody, for. Yeah, that, that would be cognitive overload. <laughs> it looks like a terrific class, though. I read about that class. Yeah, though. I'm excited, but it's a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. oh so let's goodness. do this. You guys select your your three or four books. Oh, yes, Kara? I don't know if we were still deciding on four, five, or six. Are we, or we're just going to go with four? Um, well, that's okay. good, yes. Okay, so a comment to that. You know, I have a book that I wasn't able to finish this round. Two other people weren't able to finish a book this round. I feel like adding more like it's hard to read four books in a month yep. with life so i feel like if we can stay at four that would be great agreed 
We got a motion, we got a second, we got a lot of head nods. Everybody kind of agrees. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna select four books, take a quick back. Animating bathroom scale break. is like half a book because it's all pictures, so. Yeah. Well, we are, we're familiar with the plot too, so yeah. that helps. Yeah. 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 Let's take 10 minutes, select books, go to the bathroom, and we'll wrap things up. Yes. Oh, she did. Appreciate your comment on you. <laughs> Start everything that I want.
Hey, Dr. Ever, are we ready? I'm pretty willing. I'm like, yeah, she's okay. Oh, is it? Okay. Are we ready? Okay, so we have Handmaid's uh, Tale. Make sure we're lined here. Graphic version, tricks, right? Hopkins, it's perfect. Hopkins, so two Hopkins books, and then we have Living Dead Girl, is that correct? Yes. Those are the four, cool. and then you guys decided to leave the two Sarah Moss books up to the board, and they'll give us direction on what to do with those. Yeah, I think this is a trifecta of tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> trifecta of tragedy. Yeah, are there any, in, go to the order, any comments? On the books or anything else? Just, just anything. Okay, yeah. In general, yes, Kara. I've got to make my vote on uh, oh. On Red Hood from last time. Does Katie have both from last time? Before she runs out the room? Um, she's, yeah, she's talking about both. Okay. Go ahead, you can. Oh, I can, I yep. can do the votes. Yep. Um, okay, I voted that no, it does not violate the statute, and that two, it should be retained in high school. Okay, say no and two. Okay. So we we have yep, Kara's uh, she's given us our votes for Red Hood from the okay, previous you, meeting, Kara. and she's a no on the statue, and then two in terms of where it should be placed. Thank you. Good. We will record that and update the the page as well, the library. John. Page. So I, I gave Laura uh, identical. I finally finished that, and this is real easy. It's uh, yes, it violates. Perfect. Any other belated votes from this group? And then we'll have to, Laura, we have other members who will have to provide us their votes. Just remind me, let's put it on the agenda for the last meeting. We'll, Sounds good. We'll wrap it up. When we report to the board, we always make note of the pending votes. Yes. Well, so we know, you know, yes. Any other good of the order? Concluding comments? Kara? Yeah, so just to confirm, this group, this committee is concluding on June 13th. 13th. That is it. That is it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and yes, Kim? If some people are not going to be here for that one. You're going to be gone? No, I leave the next day. You leave but the next I, day? Katie said she's Katie's not going to be here. Is anyone else going to be gone? I'll be back. So, what does point eight want to expect for next year? On the agenda. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, so technically, June 30th, the committee expires, right, per board direction. Mm -hmm. we, we have not received direction from them on what they want to do. If they want to pick up the committee next year in, in August, if they want to go back to the challenge process to go back to schools and then would work its way up to us, we're waiting, we're waiting for clarity from them. I, you guys, this has been, a, you guys have done a fabulous job. This is a lot of work <laughs> to be here all year long. I, I have told people, I, and I'm speaking for you, I don't know if the group is going to want to do this for year two. So if they decide to form the committee again, they might have to find other, other reps. But we, we don't know where they're at in terms of, of next year's process. But it does, it finishes June 30th. Dr. Everett, anything to add there? No, nope, that's spot on. 
Okay, any other, Kim? I was going to add, um, just in case we have Lynn and Andrew not here, and Colson, but for those that might not be here, I have very much appreciated everybody's comment, the discourse, the civility, all of that. It's just been a very, you know, really good yeah. committee and experience. Yeah, it's been outstanding. Okay, anything else? The process has been fun, the book's not so No, fun. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I do this book club with different books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys will leave your rubrics with Laura and then uh, drive safe and enjoy, as John said, our beautiful fall weather out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, good evening. Thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, 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 I love it. Okay.